Hello, welcome to episode 4. Today I'm going to be looking at serial communications, um, which is quite complicated, it's taken me a lot of time to understand. Hopefully I'll be able to explain it to you fully. Uh, if I do miss anything or you have any questions, do post it in the comments. Um, anyway, so firstly, um, I'd just like to explain what I've got here. Here, I've got a little variable, res variable resistor set up, uh, connected to power, which is black, and ground, which is earth, and connected to this LED, which you can see just here. And if I turn it, you can see the LED goes up a bit, down a bit, you can get values in between. Obviously, there's quite a lot of no, uh, quite a lot large area where there's no light, but that's just because LEDs have a certain resistance, and until you, and until you reach that, nothing will happen. So as you can see, little variable variable resistor. Now hopefully by the end of the video I'll be able to get these readings from this resistor and see what voltage it, um, is the resistance. So this is an analog to digital converter chip. The most important thing to remember about serial communications is that one of these pins is the clock pin. Now the clock pin decides when the chip runs its processes, so whatever it does, like sampling or returning an output, it's always done via the clock input, which is the most important thing that you have to remember when you're doing serial communications. So as you can see on this chip here, there are eight pins. Now one of them on the data sheet, which I'll show you later, is labeled CLK. This is the pin which you connect to the GPIO port that clocks the processor or chip. So, here is the data sheet for the MCP3002 uh, chip that I'm using. So, as you can see, it says 10 bit analog to digital converter uh, with SBI serial interface. Now, here is a diagram of the chip, and as you can see, here is the CLK pin as I described earlier. So, this it uh, decides when the chip actually clocks. So, as you can see, here is a block diagram of how the chip works. So, channel 0 and channel 1, they are the two analog inputs. VDD is the input voltage. Uh, that's normally uh, 3 volts, I believe. Uh, so, in on the Raspberry Pi, it's 3.3 .3 volts. Here is the uh, CS or SSHDN. That's uh, it's the shutdown which is what shutdown stands for. D in, uh, that's the digital input, uh, which is where you send it the different commands. And here, here's where the clock goes in, and here is what it outputs. So, I'll scroll down to what I found was the most useful part of this, um, which was actually a graph of how the chip works. Now, it really helped me to understand how I should structure my program uh, when I saw this. So, here it is. So as you can see, here is the CS or shutdown. So when that is high, the chip is completely turned off. Now as soon as you drop that voltage, it starts processing. Now, what you do is you, is you turn D in on and clock it. That sends the start. Then Depending whether or not uh, you want to do SGL or DIFF, uh, you can send 1 or 0 bits, then you clock it. Then you can uh, decide whether you want ODD or sign, and then, of course, you clock it. Then it does the sampling time, um, then you clock it, and then you start receiving. So from now on, it doesn't matter what is in DN. So first, when you clock it, it just sends nothing. Then the second time you clock it, it sends a 1 or a 0, depending what that bit is. The third time you clock it after that, you get uh, bit 8, until you work down to bit 0. Um, now after this, um, you can turn uh, CS back on again, which resets the chip. So, the biggest problem I had when I was trying to get this to work was um, 
actually my ordering of the program and I found that I occasionally missed out um, to I don't know for example turning CLK, CLK on but I solved that later which I'll, um, which I'll explain when we look at the code. Also I had a problem where I forgot to turn CS on and that was a serious bug and although it was a very simple problem it really annoyed me and took up a lot of my time trying to fix it. So now I will just build a little circuit and I'll go through what everything is connected to. As you can see here, I've got the little circuit set up, so that this is the chip, and the variable resistor is just at the back here. Then it's connected to uh, four different I.O. ports, uh, again, power and ground, and then the chip is grounded, the chip is also powered, um, and it's the same resistor set up. So, now I'll just show you a little example of the circuit in action. So, as you can see, here I've got the Raspberry Pi terminal. So, if I just run the ls command, you can see I've already got my code in here and the resistor test file. So, if I just run the command, which is sudo dot slash oh, resistor test and enter, there you go, the value is 1023. I'll change that, and it now says 835, 541, naught, and you can see all, you get all the values in between. That's only a small example. Now, um, important thing to remember with this is it's good to debug. So as you can see, all these values here. It's just me debugging my program, because I was getting an error where I was only getting even uh, values, but I fixed that error, and it was just a simple maths error in my function, but that's fixed now. So it's really important to debug, and as you can see, if I scroll up, for example, when it's printing out 1023, you can see all the bits that it's printing out, and what exact numbers it's printing out, which you can see there. So now I'll just uh, go into the example of code, and you can see how it works. Okay, so here you see we have the code which I'm running for my resistor test. Now, here you can see I have short weight function and long weight function. I've taken these from a gertboard.c example, uh, and they work just fine. So, here you can see I've got the clock functions and... Um, the other clock function. I'll come back to them later once I explain what the rest of the program does. Here, this is just standard. Um, just checks if this uh, GPIO has been set up. If not, it's a pseudo error or something like that. Um, now here, this sets up uh, the different pins. So this um, is chip select or shutdown in that data sheet that I showed you. I've tried to comment it all so it's sensible. sensible. Now, this must must always be up unless you're reading when you pull it down. Uh, then we also have CLK. This is really important that you understand how this works. Uh, and the input. And then we have the only uh, one which we're reading from, which is uh, D out, the output from the chip. We then set some options. I've looked at the data sheet and I've decided these are the options that I want to read from the graph that I was using. Then we start initializing the chip. So you need to bring the bit down, uh, which is the chip select or shutdown. Is in it's labelled as CS or SHDN. Um, so we have digital right here. We also have clock, uh, STL diff, and these just copy in the values that I've set up here. One problem was it with it is 
that if I plug it into different GPIO pins, I get it won't work. Uh, so hopefully, I sh um, later on, when I create the program, I should be able to um, create a little question and answer thing at the start, which asks you which ones you've plugged it into. So once you've done that, uh, you do short wait, and then you read the values um, from in this little loop here. First, however, we have to catch the null bit. We all know, always know that that's going to be null, but you uh, read it anyway. So you clock. Now, this is important, as with these ones, because every time you want to write or read from a pin, first you have to um, turn the clock pin off, then you have to read or write, and then you have to turn the clock pin on again. So this is what all of these did. Because I didn't want to put all of these three statements in every time, I just put it into functions so it's a lot simpler. So as you can see, for the read one, um, it turns the pin off, digital read, and then turns it back on again, and returns whatever value digital read returns. Then, it puts it into a little integer here. I did this because I was getting some errors, so I mainly did it for error logging. And then, now you just I just see out onto the end of the original bit, see out. Um, this just, again, it's logging, and it makes it easier to see if you have a problem, because I had a problem where I was only getting even numbers outputted. Then, it adds it to the decimal value, which is initially uh, started as null. And then at the very end, it stops the reading sequence by bringing up uh, the CS, or shutdown pin. And then it returns the decimal value of the resistor. That is all the code in essence. So, I hope that was uh, all easy for you to understand. I hope I explained it well. Do post any questions or uh, opinions in the comments below. Um, also, next episode I'm going to be looking at exact voltage outputs from the temperature sensor and from the variable resistor and hopefully I might even be able to get some temperature readings also I have a light dependent resistor so I should be able to get some light readings from that as well so I'll uh, see you next episode